if you've been consistently training for a few years now, two, three, four years of strength training, doing the calisthenic stuff, great exercises, you know that you've been doing the great exercises that every calisthenics coach, influencer, gymnast have been recommending the pull-ups, the dips, the planche push-ups, the press, the whatever. You've been training hard, high effort, day in, day out, you're training four to five days a week, multiple hours, and yes, maybe it worked at the beginning, but for a few consecutive months now, you're making no progress. You're running in circle, basically. You're running to fatigue, and maybe it seems like you'll make progress, but then you're too fati fatigued, you're stuck, and progress completely stalls. Your problem is that most likely you are no longer a beginner. You squeezed all, all your new gains, but you're still training like a beginner. And you are not training to your current level of ability. So you need to do this. Listen to this video. This is periodization for calisthenics. So you can achieve advanced skills like one arm chin up, planche, planche push ups, full, full front lever holds in even more intense exercises like Iron Cross, Maltese, etc. So the story that I shared is exactly my story. I didn't, yeah, it was to lure you in, but it was not made up. It was exactly what happened to me. So I worked to achieve the Iron Cross and the Maltese. It was about three years ago, maybe four to three years ago now already. So I was working the Maltese and the Iron Cross predominantly, doing some other stuff, but really mainly those, and I was training them hard. Effort was not the problem. Hard work was performed day in, day out, four, five days a week. I, I was even training up to 25 hours a week, so like a professional gymnast all, also, uh, almost. And I was doing the exercises that every professional referred to as great exercises. So for the Maltese, for example, I was doing the Maltese board presses that every gymnast on YouTube uh, basically talks about. And I was doing also, besides the strap assisted or the Maltese board presses, I was doing short isometric holds, high intensity, assisted, maybe with bands or something, but also longer, more volume isometric holds to really, you know, mix it up, um, something like 15, 20, 25 seconds, more blood supply to the muscle. I was really mixing in great exercises. Iron cross holds, iron cross uh, pullouts, assisted, dynamic, isometric, and also some accessories as well, doing some bent arm stuff and isolation. I was really training hard. Effort was not a problem. I was doing many hours at the gym, but I basically, be, beneath the, beyond the, initial phase of newbie gains, uh, although I was training advanced skills, you always have that newbie gains because you're introducing your body to a new exercise, a new skill. So yeah, I made progress maybe in the initial month, but I just became so fatigued and no matter how hard I worked from that point on, it didn't seem to work at all. That's an actual story. It happened to me three to four years ago and that yielded the idea for this video. Uh, I was simply training like a beginner. So the beginner, by that I mean I had a workout and I repeated the workout multiple times throughout the week. So maybe four days, five days total of cross and Maltese in total. Uh, maybe two to three times of each uh, in some way, shape or form. And I had a great, great workout and I had the intention of training very hard, that was never my problem, but beyond that, there was no like broader plan, scheme, idea of how to structure my training. So that's a beginner basically, because it works for beginners, just like anything else works for beginners. Beginners can recover from training in a very short period of time and come back and perform actually better. But I was no longer a beginner, I was training for advanced skills, and I already had maybe five years of uh, structured strength training behind me already. I squeezed all the newbie gains. I was, doesn't matter really, intermediate, advanced, whatever. It was intermediate and above for sure, certainly. 
uh, and I needed something that suits my current level of ability. And the moment I did, and I, I can recall because I was astonished by the results, I did 5-3-1 by Jim Wendler, uh, which is an intermediate program. I was astonished by the results. I got so persuaded, so I did 5-3-1. I repeated the, the, the program. It is a monthly cycle. It's a one month that you can repeat. 11 consecutive months. It was so, I was so persuaded by the progress because I actually, for the first time in a long time, trained for my current ability. And the results showed. I didn't want to sacrifice them. I, I, I just, okay, that worked for me. I will do it again and again and again. And today I will show you the principles and guidelines, how to understand those programs and actually program for yourself and make it work. Because most likely, if you're watching this, you are no longer that, you know, calisthenics influencer, bucket of exercises, just grocery list of exercises for a newbie beginner. How can I train the chest? No, you're training for strength, you're training for performance, for skills. Most likely if you're watching this um, video, so you actually can use that structure for yourself and see progress in the skills, the, the high intensity skill that you want to achieve. Um, I did a 5 one it was my first experience with a, a, a longer planned uh, training program. Let's break it down. So basically, beginner, uh, intermediate, advanced, they have different progression rate. That's what actually defines whether you are a beginner, an intermediate, or advanced, okay? You have the SRA curve. This is time, this is performance, and this is your, this is you right now, okay? This is the starting point, right? Boom. And performance level, bang, time, bang. Okay, you are training. After training, you're actually losing performance because you're sore, you're fatigued, you just train. Imagine like training uh, uh, the same day or the day after. You're still fatigued, you are not able to perform if you train hard as the day prior. But hopefully, with enough recovery time, which is that window of time, okay, that's the recovery time, you recover, and by the time that you hit the next workout, you're actually better than your starting point. So that's the improvement, right? You made that much improvement, and then you rinse and repeat, performance drops again, but hopefully by the next time that you will train, performance again hits another bump, okay? So basically for a beginner, that time period is only about 48 to 72 hours. But for an intermediate, that, that might be seven days, 10 days, and for an advanced, that can be 20 days, 30 days, it takes that much time to complete the whole SRA uh, cycle, stress recovery adaptation. Hence, you need a, a different plan. If you're just bashing your head against the wall, it will simply not work if you are more than a beginner. It doesn't really matter for today's sake of the video if you are intermediate, advanced, elite. I don't really care about them. I will just give you a program that will work for an intermediate and above, okay? Because you are surely not a beginner if you find yourself really reson uh, resonating with the, with the uh, intro, okay? You've, you've been training for a few years now, you know that you train hard, you squeezed all the newbie gains, but you're stuck now, what to do? So you're not a beginner, you're intermediate and above, and I will give you something that will work for both, intermediate, advanced, elite, whatever, okay? so. Once you understand the SRA, SRA curve, uh, the SRA cycle, you, you need to understand that we want to spread the time between high intensity efforts and match the uh, progression rate, uh, you know, to our current level of ability because we can't really increase reps and weight uh, on a daily basis anymore. So we will run a four week cycle. A four week cycle is safe. If you're an intermediate and you can even progress faster than once every four weeks, 
you will actually be able to do so running every program. That's fine. You will progress be, be, between weeks actually and or not only between months. So it's fine, but it is more to understand the overarching principles and guidelines uh, today. If you understand that you have to modulate your effort, so you can't train extremely high intensity, you have to fluctuate training in some sort, right? And you, all, you basically heard it probably, uh, high volume to high intensity, or uh, low load to high load. There are many ways, but basically make it in some way, shape or form easy, and then somewhat more challenging as the uh, program goes. If you understand that, and you have a progression rate that matches your uh, level, then you're doing a great training program. And by great training program, I mean you'll be lapping the calisthenics guys that you're training with and the ones that you see on video because nobody really trains in calisthenics smart. They're just kids who train all out max effort and sense. Most of them are very light and young and still live with their mama and eat their whole fridge. They have no stress. They're able to just squeeze more of the newbie gains. They might achieve Maltese, but they are still beginner. I know it's high level of performance, but being able to perform Maltese for them is still relatively beginner, almost an intermediate skill. And you're doing a Maltese, but you're a full grown man and it's a very advanced one for you. So you can train like these kids that you see on calisthenics videos. Uh, and, and eventually all of them really uh, injure themselves and then, oh, I will exceed myself. I will, I will reach new heights, watch and see, late and wait, watch and late, uh, wait and watch, but they never do. It's just a cycle, a vicious cycle that you don't want to repeat. Here's how we do it. So I was doing the 531. Uh, and the 531, what, is, what it does great is that you start with a week of five repetitions plus. So we actually, it's a, it's, a, it's a max effort, it's max rep set, but it has to be at least five. And then week two is three repetitions plus, again, max repetition, slightly higher load, about 5% increase in weight week by week. And then once uh, one repetition uh, max, it's a, again another uh, repetition PR set. You go for as many repetitions as you can. But gym really aims for you to achieve about 10 repetitions on week one, seven repetitions on week two, and four repetitions on week three. He does that by actually prescribing you with weights that are easier than your five rep max, your three rep max, and your one rep max. And then you deload on the fourth week, uh, rinse and repeat. By the time that I reached week three, I already broke my PRs. So I was astonished and I got persuaded and I wanted to repeat this program over and over again. Uh, it only took me three weeks to flush all the stress and fatigue that I had from high intensity, every workout, four workouts a week, for endless amounts of months and weeks to flush all the stress and break new PRs. By the time I reached the second training block, so week seven, I performed five second Maltese holds. It's still on my Instagram account. I can recall that day to the T, five second ring Maltese hold. And I was on that same day already doing kips to Maltese and different transitions from planche to, to Maltese. That's how much progress I made by week Seven, that's all it took me to not, not recognize my, my performance level. So maybe up to that, I thought I, I'm kind of strong. I'm stronger than most people, obviously. But that program put me in a different slot, like with the elites uh, of, of the rings, uh, at least on Instagram. <laughs> not like the gym, the the. the on competitive Olympic ones, but I was not recognizing myself. So um, that's one way that you actually modulate your effort. 
it's still max repetition, but performing a set of 10 repetitions is still easier on the system to recover from than a really, really heavy set of three or four or two repetitions. It is that 90% of your max, one rep max, you can imagine it's something that is basically equivalent to your three rep max. If you can only do an exercise for three repetition, it's your 90% of max. If you're doing a, a two, a, a, only two repetition maximum or one, it's certainly above your 90%. And it is that training percentage, that high intensity of training that must be most, a, most under most control because that is the most nervously fatiguing training percentage. That's really high effort. And most people train that intensity day in, day out, and they get burned very quick. And if you're heavy enough, so basically if you're like an athlete, calisthenic athlete who weighs 75 kilograms or above, you will pay the price very quick. If you weigh 60 kilograms, you will be able to run this because you only train with low load. That's, that's how it goes. So even if you're doing three rep max, two rep max, one rep max, uh, and really that's the equivalent of about six seconds if you're talking about isometric holds, it's low load still. If you're 70, 75 kilogram, you will start paying the price quicker than the light athlete would, okay? So 75 kilogram and above, I weight 80, 85, I pay the price. The, the, the stupid Maltese cross program that I was running beforehand had me with the most severe tendonitis, the inner elbow uh, pain, mostly from the Maltese, so much stress on the elbows. I, I really thought that, you know, I gave my best run on calisthenics. This is the best that I can. I get it, Maltese is not for everyone. But running 531 for two months just completely changed my perspective. That's 531. That's how gym modulates the effort. Intensity goes up, volume goes down, and that's only one set a week. One really hard set a week, and even you start with relatively high volume, so it's not really that much high intensity sets. So really one hard set, a workout, that's everything. But one high intensity max effort set a month. So I, I was coming so fresh to that week, week three, that I broke PRs. The Juggernaut method, method Juggernaut method by Chad Wesley Smith, does a similar thing, but even spreads it over 16 weeks. But you get a concept, it's five sets of 10, okay, in the first training block, five sets of 10 throughout all weeks, um, you know, other than the deload. But he, so volume is the same, but he increases the intensity. You start with 60%, you then progress to 65%, it's of your one rep max, and then five sets of 10 with your 70% of one rep max, and it's even for a plus set, another, a PR set. So it's, not only the heaviest, but also it's max effort. You go for as many reps as possible, even beyond the 10 if you have that at this point. Again, so basically it's, it's a light, medium, heavy. At, in Jim's program, everything is, is hard. It's hard, 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 but, but high volume, medium volume, low volume. Here, volume stays the same but he modulates, Chad, the load, the, the, the intensity. So it's light, medium, heavy. Only this week is really hard. At this point, you're training 10 repetitions, not with your 10 rep max. So you can really understand that there, are, there is very limited amount of the really high intensity testing sort of uh, weeks once every month. That's really the, the overlap. And you have the system. The system is the Soviet system. 
It's a training program, slightly more complex, but again, see the resemblance. So, the, whereas here it's linear, you know, volume go up, uh, intensity go up, excuse me, volume goes down in fast one. In, in the system, it, it just fly, fluctuates, volume go up and, down, up and down like that, it waves, that's a wave structure, right? So you start with one and a half time volume of just a certain amount, and then week two you drop the volume, week three you double the volume. As you can see, you wave the volume. It's like medium volume, low volume, extremely high volume, and then on the deload is, is low volume. So it waves the volume, but the intensity is linearly increased. 65%, 70%, 75%, okay? What you need to understand for calisthenics, we will talk about how actually we'll, we will build a calisthenics program, but you have to understand that every one of these coaches, they knew that you can't train day in, day out, week in, week out, high intensity and expect to break PRs every day and running your head into the wall. You have to modulate your effort in some way, shape or form, and you have to slightly differ training from week to week, okay? It's not only that you modulate effort, you also make it just slightly different from previous week, enough so your body will have to adapt, but not exactly the same, so you know your body will not have any incentive to, to become stronger. A, a Power to the People, a program by Pavel, a very pragmatic program. He keeps the volume exactly the same throughout the whole training program. It's just two sets of five. You know Pavel, boring but works. Uh, but he increases the load 5% each and every week. So this is not a four week structure. This is, I wrote 11 week, but you have to get the idea behind it. So basically, increase by 5% load uh, each and every week you start intentionally light. So this is very light week, again a very light week, still very light, it's light. Here it becomes medium, so you feel like you're training. Here you're not even training. This is not even training, what you would think that will actually make you stronger eventually. It is that easy. By week seven, you basically match your previous PR, two sets of, two sets of five, with 85% of 100 max, that, that is prescribed using the previous uh, 100 max. Uh, so it's basically matching your PR, but at that point, you are already training for seven weeks, so you accumulated a lot of technique, a lot of neurological efficiency, you became stronger at the exercise, so by week eight, this is where Pavel really wanted you on the Power to the People program to break PRs. He didn't want you to try to go for a PR here, <laughs> okay? He wanted you to be somewhat towards the middle end type of uh, that uh, time range, that's 11 week. So here you're already breaking PR because you're doing two sets of five with 90% of your previous uh, one at max. It's more than you were able to perform. And then uh, by week nine, it, uh, basically every week you hit beyond that is another PR and another PR and another PR. Hopefully you will uh, really squeeze as much as you can. And then you rinse and repeat, okay? So Pavel modulates the effort in a very pragmatic way. We keep the volume the same. We keep everything re very fresh, very light. You build a lot of momentum, technique, neurological efficiency, you become stronger, and then those are heavy weeks, that's a new PR, and then every week is a new PR until you do that program again and again and again. So every coach knew that you have to modulate the effort, and every program here allows you to progress within your level of ability. So, Let's say, let's take the 5 p one Even if you're intermediate and not advanced, it will work for you as long as you're not beginner because it's a five plus. 
So let's say I repeat the next week. I can do 11 or 12 or 13 or 15 repetitions. If I progressed that much, fine, I'll take it. Five reps more, once a month. <laughs> Sounds great, right? Imagine doing uh, on, on month one, 10 chin-ups, and then month two, you'll do 15, and then 20, and then 25. We'll take it, right? We'll just be able to progress according to our progression uh, ability. If you can take five kilograms, we add five. If you can take two kilograms, we take two. But if you're intermediate, you'll progress faster. If you're in advance, it will still work. You will just have a different progression rate. And the programs allows you to do so. But these programs, the problem is that they talk about percentages a lot. And with calisthenics, it's very hard to modulate the load in such small increments. 5%, 5%, 5%. How can I really know what 5% is? Uh, unless you're doing, let's say, weighted calisthenic or something like that, where you can actually add uh, one kilogram, two kilogram, five kilogram, 20 kilogram to the load to yourself and, and, and calculate those percentages. If you're doing calisthenics, plunge, front lever, one arm chin up, it's basically body weight progressions. So these programs doesn't work that great if you don't actually manage the load. And it's very difficult to manage the load. And I will give you a calisthenics program uh, to answer that problem. I was doing, when I was doing the Iron Cross and the Maltese, the band system. So I actually, I put a lot of different bands and I can actually uh, um, manage the load with two kilogram increments because I had the lightest of band so I can progress very, very, very slowly. And it's one of the problems with calisthenics often. But you don't have to. You can use body weight progressions. Let's say you're training the planche. You have tuck planche, advanced tuck planche, straddle planche, half lay and full. And it's not 5% increments. It's more like 10%. The gap in strength needed between tuck and advance is huge. And between advance, tuck punch, and a straddle punch, it's huge. It's maybe half a year of training. So how can you really expect to, to have a program that precise? We really need to, to modulate it, uh, uh, but apply the same principles for calisthenics. And by that, we will just take different repetition ranges because 5, 3, 1, it's still relatively close in intensity. I want to make the gaps bigger to match the different body weight progressions and regressions, okay? I will give you an example. Week one, week two, week three. So really, if we understand this program, we will just create a program right now for ourselves. And you can use that program, you can take each one of these programs, you can write down in a comment if you want me to help you with, with if you have a certain question about programming for yourself. You can take this one. You know, it will work if you understand that you have to modulate your, your effort and your progression rate needs to match your level of ability, then you will, you, you will make amazing progress. So we need to really make bigger gaps in intensity between weeks. So let's perform five sets of 12 on week one, five sets of six on week two, and five sets of one on week three. This is our high intensity week. This is our all out week. And this is where we train really the 90% of max and above. Okay, we keep, we are reserved, we are patient. And once we hit that week, boom, we go. You have to take your, your, your uh, PRs. You have to know to take uh, uh, your new PRs to break your ability, your ceiling of what you think you can do. It, it really expands your horizons of what you perceive is your limits. And here we can deload. Um, but what we created is really big gaps in repetitions between week to week because 5, 3, 1 or 60, 65, 70%, that's small gaps. In calisthenics, between bodyweight progressions, it's huge gaps. So 
we need to make the gaps in, in isometric hold or repetitions suitable for calisthenics, for the progressions. If you're doing, uh, by the way, 12. Oli. Anyway, um, if you're doing uh, isometric holds, that's about 24 seconds, that's about 12 seconds, and that's about two seconds. So clear gaps in intensity, right? You're probably able to hold tuck plunge forever. So that's the tuck, but advanced tuck gets extremely more difficult. That's advanced tuck. And straddle is almost beyond uh, belief. So it's only two second holds. But right now you already have a program that modulates your effort it fluctuates the intensity and it suits the natural, um, basically the nature of calisthenics, which is those bodyweight progressions and regressions. And here we can go back to something very light, like one set or three sets, doesn't really matter, of 10 seconds with whatever, really. You make it light, but you get the point big gaps in repetitions or isometric holds to match bodyweight regressions and progressions. And what do we do after, this is block one, right? First block, uh, training block is usually referred to as just one month of training. What do we do after that? We repeat this process, but in calisthenics, again, it's very hard to manage load in small increments. So instead of adding weight once you finish the training block, we can add volume, we can add repetitions or time in isometric holds. So if I am repeating the second cycle, I am really aiming for 26 seconds right now, on the, you know, 15 seconds on week two, on here I am hitting three to four seconds. Okay, so I'm repeating or two repetitions or seven repetitions or uh, th uh, 13 repetitions. I'm repeating the same structure of volume uh, goes down, intensity goes up, but I'm exceeding my previous performance. And right now you are basically competing with previous training block and previous training block. So every week you're, bre you, you're breaking your previous week's PRs. And let's say that may be the progression rate of a, an advanced practitioner. You're only able to add two seconds a month, right? It's still great because after half, year, half a year of training, I'll, I'll be adding 12 seconds to my iron cross holds, to my planche holds, to my Maltese holds, who really maintains that much progression rate? It's very difficult. If you can add 12 seconds to your planche front lever, anyone will take it. But not a lot of people are patient to actually do it. Okay? They just want to train. I want to feel sore. I want to, to go all out. Okay, you that, you do you. You made progress because you were a beginner. Anything works when you're a beginner you will see that you will just run into a wall and I'll be 12 seconds stronger and we'll meet you in about a year and see where you are when you'll be injured in every joint in your upper body. If you're an intermediate, you'll be able to progress faster. You will maybe add four seconds or five seconds. So this is 30 seconds by the time you reach week four. This is 20 seconds and this is eight seconds. Okay, why? Just because you're intermediate. So you allowed your, your progression rate to match your level of adaptability. And advanced will progress two seconds once a month, but maybe if you're an intermediate, that will be six seconds a month. Most training programs that are for advanced can really work for intermediate as well. You will just progress within weeks and within training months and really exceed what an advanced trainee would do. So this is a program that will work for calisthenics because it modulates 
the volume, the repetitions, the isometricals, the time. Uh, here it's very difficult to manage the percentages, the load with two kilograms. I was able to do it because I had a, a home gym with the exact same setup every time, with bands and rings already hanged from the same exact place at the same exact height, running bands from, from thick to, to the thinnest, lightest band possible, and it helped me. So I took a powerlifting program and adapted it. But you can do and, and apply the same principle, modulate effort and progression rate to calisthenics and your level of ability. And once you do that and make that type of progress in six months, you will no longer train like an asshole, like an idiot, like a little calisthenics kid from his home. You'll, you'll do that, you'll take it, you'll be persuaded, you will want to succeed and make progress. That is progress, that's results. That's what we do. Maybe it's not the most exhilarating, exciting type of approach, but most people will break their PRs by the time they reach week three, if they modulate effort for two to three weeks. That's how fatigued they were and their nervous system is shut down that only two to three weeks took them to recover, adapt, and become strong. And most people will break pre-hours here. Some of them, it will take them two months. So on week seven, the second training block, they will break PRs, but it will happen very quick. Regardless, if you compare that to the previous amount of time that you were making zero progress and having a lot of injuries beforehand, maybe three, four, five months, of training with no like actual results that you can measure and see, boom, I added 12 seconds to all my holds and so on. So that's periodization, periodization for calisthenics. Apply that to calisthenics skills, one arm chin up, hands and push up, and the planche and the front lever and even more advanced stuff, like arm cross, Maltese, like I did. And don't make the mistakes of just training like a beginner, like a newbie, when you're already a few years into structure, strength training, training hard is not your problem. Having no plan is your problem. So hope it helped. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comment section below uh, and see you next time.